Do you want stunning 3D logos and icons without any artistic struggle? Well, this video's for you. We'll take any JPEG, PNG, or SVG, and bang, 3D magic. This video is for people familiar with the basics. If you're a complete beginner to Blender, then check out my beginner series, links below. So let's get started. So what we're going to use is an SVG file, and you can convert JPEGs or PNGs to SVGs for free. There's lots of sites to do it. Adobe Express, for example, if I click on that, then click upload your photo, and you can take any photo, then download the SVG, and it does a very good job. If you want a bit more control, you can download a free program called Inkscape, and it does a very similar thing. The advantage of using something like Inkscape is that you can go in and start editing the points and moving them around if you feel you need to. Having said that, you can do those things in Blender, so it's not really important to have that much control. So in Blender, this is version 4.1.0, although this will work in many previous versions and shouldn't change for any future versions. My screen task keys are down the bottom here if you need to see those. I'll start by deleting the default cube as that just gets in the way, so I'll select that with left click and press delete. And we need to go to File, Import, and there's the scalable vector graphics just here, or SVG. So I'll click on that and I'll navigate to my file, which is wolflogo.svg. You can download this if you want. Link in the description. I'll left click on that and press import. And it comes in really small. If I zoom in, you can see it just there and I can click on that. If I press N on my keyboard, you can actually see the size of this object and it's 20 centimeters roughly. So I'll press S then 10 to scale it up so it's 10 times as big, so it's two meters by two meters roughly. I'll go to top view as well with seven on my numpad so we can take a look at how it's come in. Now you might be able to see there's a slight error up the top here. That's probably a bit of the image that I didn't delete, but yours might come in a little bit rough as well. And we can easily tidy it up by going into edit mode. So that's edit mode up here, or you press tab on your keyboard and you can now see all the points. So I can easily box select the ones up here that I don't need and press delete. It'll ask you what you want to get rid of. I want to get rid of the vertices or points, and it's cleared those. Now you might want to zoom in and edit the shape. Now do bear in mind, you only need to do this if your shape needs editing or you're getting any errors in the extrusion step, which I'll talk about after this. So I can select on any of the points. And as soon as you select a point, you have two end points that you can also now select. And if I press G to grab to move one of those, you can see the way that's affecting our shape. Now I'll undo that movement. If I select the middle point, I can press V to set the handle type. You can also find that in the control point menu under set handle type. Now ordinarily this is set to aligned, but all these points have been set to free. So when it's aligned, if I click on aligned, you can see it's changed color slightly, but I can now select an end and press G to grab and it keeps my handles together. And if I move out, it kind of distorts the curve depending on where the next point along the line is. If I select the middle point and again press V for the handle type and change this to free, I can now select these points, press G to grab and move them independently. I would suggest for end points such as this, you keep them as free, but middle points such as this, they're better off aligned. Now for the most part, you may not need to change these. What you might need to do though is go in to areas where there are a few too many points. Let's say this one here, I can select that point and press delete and delete that vertex because it's not particularly necessary. If I zoom out and move across to this side here, there's another one down here, this one just here, I can press delete and remove that vertex. Now something interesting happened here if I zoom out, it looks a bit strange. So I'll undo that and show you what happened was there are in fact, if I press G to grab, there are actually two vertices on top of one another. So just be aware that you might be getting two on top of each other like this if you do get any anomalies. I can delete this one, so delete vertices, and this one, select that point and delete this one as well. And this one at the end here, I need to resize it so this shape down here works. So first of all, I'll just extend this end out. So G to grab, move that out slightly. This one can move up slightly as well, so there's a bit of a sharp point there. And this one over here, I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Select this handle, G to grab, move it down, and you can see it's sorted out that end like so. So just be aware there may be a few anomalies like that that you might need to sort out. But generally speaking, you only need to go in and edit the shape if you have a problem with the extrusion, which is the step that I'll show you now. If you like this approach and want to go into even more depth with methodical courses, then try out my Blender beginner course bundle, four courses for only $30. Discount coupon in the description. So in order to extrude our shape, let's jump back to object mode with tab. I'll go down to the curve properties down here. And to give this some thickness, we'll go to the geometry section here. I'll just scroll down so you can see that more easily. And also I'll come to kind of perspective view here. 
so we can see the effect it's having. Now, before I make any changes here, it's important to be aware that we have scaled this 10 times, and I'm assuming you've done the same. These different tools on the side here should be affected by that scale. So if this is scaled by 10 and we change this extrusion to one meter, it will end up being 10 meters. So we need some way of resetting the scale. We can do that by making sure our object is in object mode. So that's object mode up here. And we can press Control A. You can also find this menu under the object menu here. And you can see there, there's the apply menu just there. And we're trying to apply the scale that's being created. When I click that, our scale is now reset to one, as it were, with our scale applied. Now I can start using the tools over here. The first one is extrusion. So if I tap the right arrow here, it's extruded it by 0.01 meters. Now I feel like this is a possible bug because it's actually saying 0.2 there instead of 0.01 in terms of the height of our object just here. So for some reason, these values don't seem to make a lot of sense to me. So I'm going to change this to 0.004, I think will be the right amount of thickness. And that's what we've got there. And you can adjust this according to your preference. Now you may notice the edges are particularly sharp. We can change that with the bevel just here. Now again, if I click on the right arrow, it gives it a really thick bevel, which may be what you're going for, but it's not what I'm going for. So 0.001 would probably be a good bevel width. And you can see the bevels looking a lot better there. The resolution of the bevel is how many segments make up the bevel. If I go to wireframe, you can see there's four segments in there, making up the curve around our edges. And that looks good, so I'll go back to solid mode, and the resolution of four, I think works very well. The one thing you may notice though is curves such as this area here, they look a little bit blocky. So if you have a logo with lots of curves, you might want to smooth those out a bit. The way we do that is we can scroll up to the top and under resolution, the default is 12, but you might want to turn that up to something like 20. And you can see the smoothness of that curve is much better. If I go to wireframe, you can see that it's added a lot more segments to our shape. So it does increase the face count, not that it makes a great deal of difference. Let's go back to solid mode. And I think that's looking great. But remember, if you do get any anomalies, perhaps in corners such as here, and maybe there's a slight anomaly in there, not that it's particularly noticeable, then you might have to go into edit mode with tab, and you'll probably have to turn off your extrusion and your bevel so you can see it easily. Make your edits, such as deleting any duplicates, and then come back and re-extrude and re-bevel it to get the detail you require. Once you've done that, you should have a really lovely 3D version of whatever logo or icon you've got here. If you want to learn more about the rendering, then check out these videos here. Otherwise, if you've got any other questions, then do comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.